Hey everyone, I'm going to show you my first experiences with the Altera DE1 board. This is an FPGA board that I bought and I have no experience with programming FPGAs so I thought I would take you through uh, kind of like what how my first day went. So I've already gone through it because the video would be really painful if I was doing this the first time. Anyway, uh, I installed uh, all the software that came with the DE1 and the main piece here is Quartus 2 which is Altera's um, uh, development environment and it's a pretty big uh, you know that the software is like multiple gigabytes worth and after it was done I realized that version 7.2 uh, is already out of date so <laughs> you can download version 8 I think for free off the web uh, or waste your time installing 7.2 like I did anyway um, so I'm gonna start a, a new project right now the board is just running that standard um, stock uh, you know, program that it comes with and the LEDs are flashing and I've got it connected up to the computer with the USB cable and it's powered on. So that's all I've done with, with the hardware side. It's totally out of the box. So I'm going to start a new project and um, choose a working directory, sure. I'm going to call this uh, counter test 3. Okay. Oops. Yep, we'll create the directory. It's asking me if I want to add design files that I already have. Well, we don't have anything yet, so we'll just leave that blank. Now it's asking what kind of board we want to program this onto. So you have to get down there and squint and read the little number off the chip. Um, you know, Cyclone 2 isn't good enough. You actually have to pick the exact number uh, of the chip. So we've got that set. Okay. Uh, EDA tools, who knows, something more advanced. And there's a summary, so we'll finish that and start it. Now, a lot of uh, tutorials get right into the, the code, you know, either Verilog or VHDL, which is how you actually program this thing. Um, but I, I, again, I always kind of approach it more from a practical standpoint. And so the first thing that I think of is uh, the pin assignments. So a lot of people start worrying about, oh, well, geez, you know, you got to start programming these modules and this and that. But from my point of view, I need to know what we're controlling first before I can start thinking about the modules at least. So what I like to do is go to Assignments, Pins, and notice there's nothing in here. So the development environment doesn't know uh, what this chip is connected to. How can it? You know, we, all we've done so far is select this Cyclone 2, the specific thing. But what we want to do is set up the development environment so that it knows that we're using the DE1 board. So in here we can say assignments, um, import assignments, and it's going to ask for a file, and the file is in, it's on the DE1 CD-ROM, which I copied to my hard drive, DE1 CD-ROM, and it's under tutorials, design files, DE1 pin assignments, and it's a comma separated file. So we'll import that, and look what it did. So it gave us node names, <laughs> these are actually the friendly names, believe it or not, uh, that reference uh, the pins on the FPGA chip. So we can scroll down, and it's got all kinds of stuff. We've got switches, general purpose I.O., the hex displays, those are the seven segment displays. Uh, LED red, we'll be using these today. Clocks, VGA ports, DRAM ports, all kinds of stuff. So the benefit here is that in your program now, uh, you can use these friendly names without worrying about, well, is that pin T6, pin T, you know, U1, U2, you can just say DRAM, data clock, or whatever, whatever the thing is. So that's saved, so we can close that. And now we want to come in with a new programming file. So I'm going to use Verilog because it looks better to my eyes. Uh, people debate this thing up and down, VHDL versus Verilog, and that's probably a topic for another video. But so far, as a real rank beginner, 
I'm really gravitating towards Verilog. So that's what I'm going to use today. And here we are. Now it's time to start. <laughs> so uh, instead of going with one of their examples and kind of piecing it apart, I'm going to write one from scratch kind of quickly today just so you can see what it, what starting from scratch looks like. It's really a very different experience than sort of picking apart uh, one of the examples, I think. So I uh, am not, uh, I'm not at all a, um, you know, a good coder or even <laughs> experienced coder in any language. One moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the first trick here is to name the uh, top level module uh, these Verilog files are all broken down into modules. The name of this module has to be the same as the file name, I think. I, I'm, I'm still kind of figuring this out. So it, the, the Verilog 1.v is a name that it gave us. So what we're going to do is say file, uh, save as, and uh, call it countertest3.v. And I'm going to, for some reason, it doesn't get to the right directory, so we're going to put it in the right directory, countertest3.v. So this, I, as far as I know, this would be a valid um, uh, module. It just doesn't do anything. And what I've added here is key and LED red are the, um, the connections that this module is going to have. So let's define what those connections are going to do. First one is going to be an input, and it's going to be uh, just a uh, two-position vector, and that will be the key, and the output will be a seven position vector and that's going to be LEDR. Okay, and then we're going to instantiate a counter which we're going to define later and I'm going to call that counter one. I realize I should have probably coded this <laughs> from inside out instead of top down but all right, like you say I'm not much of a coder so you get to learn with me. And of course, I'm reading this off of a sheet that's on the side of the, on the side of the computer because I, I wouldn't be able to pull this up from memory quite so well. So what we're saying here is we want to have a counter, and the inputs are going to be key zero and key one, and the output is going to be LEDR. And the fact that we used those pin assignments um, that, that we set up from the CSV file means that these keys and LEDRs are going to map exactly to the um, the correct hardware on the DE1 board. So since we, we're we talking about this counter, counter is something that we haven't defined yet. So we're going to define it right down here, module counter. And counter is going to have um, a clock or a count, a clear, and <clears throat> a queue. So in here, the inputs will be the count and the clear and the output will be uh, a seven position vector Q. Then we're also going to have an internal piece of this module that doesn't get passed in or out of this module, a register, also seven positions, and we'll just call that temp. So this seven colon zero just means uh, you know, seven, it's, a, it's basically an 8-bit um, set of data, and we could have done 0 colon 7, and that would have meant uh, big endian, little endian, I don't know which way it is, but depending whether you put 0 colon 7 or 7 colon 0 means that the most significant bit will be stored on the left side or the right side. And it's a convention, so you could do your entire program either way, as long as you're consistent. So in this case, we're always doing the big number first. Okay. So we're going to say always on the positive edge of C or the positive edge. This keyboard is really lousy too since I've been using it in the garage and there's all kinds of little wire pieces and stuff stuck in there. And like I say, this is not really meant to be a tutorial in Verilog. I'm just going to kind of get through this just to show you the, the download process and how to actually get started with this board. Um, the always means that when 
uh, the positive edge, when, when this module detects a positive edge on C or clear, the stuff in this block will be run. And we need to use a begin because um, it's expecting like one statement or one, one thing here. So the begin allows us to put a whole block of code inside this always. So if the clear pin is uh, a one, then set temp to, it has some strange looking notation here. Uh, this just means it's an 8-bit binary 0. I think I might have just been able to say 0 there. I'm not sure, but like I say, this is totally new to me, too. So, else temp will equal uh, temp plus 1, just 1, binary 1. And I'll end our if there. And then we're going to assign Q equal to temp at the end of all this. So I've been I've been reading and, and watching some you know Verilog tutorials and there's kind of a couple ways to do assignments. One of them is like this, which is a uh, non-blocking assignment. Uh, and what happens with these kinds of assignments is that all of the code in the block runs, and then at the end of the block, the assignment is made. When you have just a sign like this, the code is, is sort of run sequentially in the hardware. And I don't fully understand this, but it basically means that it's, it's a little bit like a procedural language where it's actually executing these statements in sequence as opposed to just doing them all at once. So in this, in this really simple example, I don't think it really matters. But um, in more complex cases, I think it matters quite a lot. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got our top level module and it instantiates a counter and we call it counter one and it passes these two key values. Key is, keys are just the buttons on that DE1 board, the push buttons. And it gets back LEDR, which are the red LEDs on the board. And then our module, our counter is defined like this. Pretty simple. So, we can go up to uh, processing and start compilation. And yes, we want to save the changes. So we'll let it run. Compilation is actually quite slow. Now this is a terribly old computer, so I can't really fault it too much. But even on newer computers, uh, simple designs can take a surprisingly long amount of time. So we'll give that about a, a minute or two even. Okay, full compilation was successful. 433 warnings. You might figure that's pretty terrible. And um, maybe it is, I don't know. But I, I've heard that um, getting warnings with, um, with these hardware uh, description languages is, is pretty common. And some of the warnings are like, you know, the high temperature limit wasn't set or something. I don't know. But it, apparently it's normal to get lots of warnings, or at least more than with um, normal procedural coding. Okay, so it's compiled. Now what? Now we actually have to download it to the chip. So we'll go to Tools and say Programmer. And it's, it's already loaded the correct file here, but let's um, pretend it didn't. So let's just say that wasn't there. Um, the hardware setup, it's the USB blaster. It auto-detected that. USB blaster is the, um, the USB interface that this Altera DE1 board has. So it's already set up with that. That's good. And we're going to add a file, the one that was there, countertest3.sof. Pick that one. And the start button lights up, letting us know we can do it. The mode is set to JTAG, uh, meaning that we're going to program this uh, without actually storing the, the um, program to the EEPROM on the, on the board. So the, the switch on the board is in run not program, and I'm going to leave this set to JTAG. So when we program this, it's just going to be temporary. If power is removed from the board, uh, the program will disappear. Press start, and this is all happy. Now the board, uh, even though you can't see it, stopped running its um, stock firmware. So let's, let's take a look at the board now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, uh, key one and key zero are here. They're even labeled right on the board and LED R012, so that's our 8-position our vector here. 
and our two position vector here, so key 1, 0, and LED R, 0, 7 here. So the way this works is that uh, the switches, I think, bring uh, our pull downs. So what I have to do is hold down key 1, and then when I press key 0, we have some binary counting going on, just like we uh, would expect. Now if I let key 1 up, it clears, uh, just like that. So we could have added some inversion to the um, to the to the program so that I wouldn't have to hold this button down. But there it is. It, it works, and the code is downloaded, and you know the board isn't crashing. So I, I consider that a success. So today I'm going to work on um, you know more advanced Verilog stuff and try to use some of the other hardware on the board. I'd like to get started with the SRAM since that's going to be critical for um, for all the projects that I have planned for it. So I hope that was helpful. It took me a while to chew through the manual, and maybe this video will give you a bit of a head start. Okay, see you next time. Bye.